Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. I am once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have recommended me in the comment section of one of my videos. And for today we are looking at the SFF Tiger Claw which is this thing right here. Yes, I saw this on the front page of the workshop and it was also recommended to me and wow is this impressive. It's another one of these ships that have a transforming mechanic to them. So yes, it's going to be a rather interesting one. But just to point out, this thing is throwing up a lot of warnings because it's a very complex ship and it's only about 20,000 blocks because it does contain a lot of rotors. So if you're on a low end system, this could be a problematic ship. So speaking of that, let's press F10 and find the Tiger Claw, an entirely vanilla ship that uses scripts and nothing else. But this thing weighs in at not 206,000 blocks, oh no. If I copy it to the clipboard, you'll be able to see its proper number. And there we go, this ship only contains 22,430 blocks. It's only every now and again the Steam Workshop page actually lies about the block count, so it's something to watch out for. At the very front here, we have got three Gatling guns and one camera. These are your fixed hard points which you control and shoot forwards towards your enemy. Yes, this ship doesn't really contain that many weapons, but it's good enough. It's more of a luxury ship than it is a fighter. Below that, we have got two sneaky Gatling guns just hidden away there, which can also be fired forwards. And then as we come around, we've got some very fancy block work with lots of raised parts. Lots of different colours have been used, all on that very greyish scale with a few orange and a few blues mixed around there. But it does look fantastic. We then have, coming around the side, a camera, which has been hidden by some half slope blocks. And then we come along, we get lots and lots of more detail. As we come towards the mainish portion of the body, we've got a button, yes, and we can see two wheels there that are spinning. This is a very interesting way of how to cover a entrance without using a traditional door or having a rotor that flops out and lets you walk up it. No, you press this button and the door will roll backwards in a very wonky-ish way, but it allows you to walk inside and it closes up and connects up via a merge block. To the right hand side we've got this blue arm which comes all the way down to the ground which is our landing gear that can be automatically retracted and extended the click of a button. It's a very well done method of being able to land this without having to use pistons that just come down all ugly like and press into the ground. As we come across we've got a spot of purple, yes just to break up a little bit more and even more fancy block work. As we come around to the biggest portion of the body we've got some ion thrusters and some hydrogen thrusters. I have tested this and yes it can fly on a planet, the Earth like planet, it worked quite well. The only problem with using it on planets is that the way the wings fold out tend to get a bit muddled up because you generally have to have the dampeners turned off in order for them to be extended out properly and if you're on a planet and turn them off you're just going to fall down to the ground. But yes, the hydrogen thrusters have been housed in a nice little inlet part, so the blocks can't get damaged, but it does hide them quite nicely. As we move along to the back of the ship, we can see even more thrusters that have been dotted around there in a very mishmashish type fashion, but it looks great, doesn't it? Instead of having usual clusters of thrusters in a massive, like, yeah, cluster basically, all together in a row, it's a very nice way of splitting it up and having the functionality of the thrusters all with it. As we come below this, we've got our first moving mechanic. Yes, this is a very odd thing to explain, but let's just go around this first. So there's our hydrogen thrusters. Here's a additional landing gear. So when we deploy the front ones, these will also deploy down as well in order to keep you all balanced. The ones at the back do not connect to the ground. They do not lock, only the front ones do. This is just so you can angle yourself correctly if you're on an uneven surface. But as for this back part, yes, we've got a lot of rotors that go on here because these will fold down where the platform is and it'll sort of open up kind of like that near ship I showcased. But it's easier to show than it is to explain, so I will just move on for that. We have hydrogen thrusters that all go along here. We've got a purple stripe that goes along the middle there. When these deploys, the thrusters become active. You can't really see that blue glow once that happens, but it's still nice to look at it like so. 
At the back, even more purple blocks. Just to break it up with that nice stripe and some more hydrogen thrusters, more ion thrusters and some glorious block work. As we come along back around to here, we have a turret. Yes, I did forget about this thing, but we have a Gatling gun turret that can be manually controlled because we do have our cameras on there, but it is something that can be controlled or will fire automatically if a enemy comes nearby. We also have our slave turret, which is sitting up there and below, which will automatically find your enemies and shoot them. So we do have a fair bit of defense, I'd like to say. It's nothing explosive, but it is enough to deter the odd small ship from coming close to you. Then as we move all the way around to the back, this thing is a giant thing. The more you look at it, the more complicated it gets. But this is our main thrust at the back. We have a lot of iron thrusters and a lot of large hydrogen thrusters. And it's been placed in a way that is just very artistic, isn't it? Just been separated up with blocks hiding it. It makes it more protected than usual thruster setups I see on ships. Because being able to nail straight into the middle there with a Gatling gun, it's going to prove very difficult, so it's nicely done with that. And then as we come up and above, we've got some more of these fancy thrusters that will fold out and above us once we deploy it, but I can't do that right now without going inside it. Above it, guess what? More thrusters. Yes, more hydrogen, more iron thrusters, and some more fancy block work. Ooh, that looks nice like that. Then coming across, we have got a sneaky little thing right there. I'm not too sure what that is. I'm just not going to touch anything on the ship because I'm scared it's going to blow up at any second. Moving across, again, haven't skipped out on the detail going along the top. You wouldn't normally see up here. Then we have this other thing, which is also on a rotor, which can be folded forwards. And it has a decoy attached onto it. It could be a projector. I might be getting muddled up with blocks here. Then at the very front, another Gatling turret just to keep you safe on the top. And there I am sitting at the front. But now we need to just drop down and take a quick gander underneath and then it's time to go inside. So underneath we do have a few atmospheric thrusters, yes. They make an appearance on this ship but that is simply to help on a planet where the iron thrusters cannot help you. We've got a camera to view underneath which is mainly to help you land once the landing gears have been deployed. We've got some more iron thrusters, more atmospheric thrusters, some more hydrogen thrusters. And then as we come along towards the back we do have a merge block with a connector there and two welders because this is how we're going to deploy our decoys. We have one specifically for space where you would drop it down and the missiles will go for that and a secondary one which will deploy it with a parachute which is used for planets. And then continuing on back we got these orange blocks every now and again and then we come to our purple stripe which will go all the way around. And that is basically it for the outside. Yes it is kind of a gloss over but you get the idea with what it looks like. But now it's time to actually get into my character, not reload the game, there we go, and head on inside. So coming across to here, we have our button, yes. Pressing this button, we'll reverse it back. Oh, look at that, it's not very safe. It does not look safe, but I've tried it multiple times in different situations, and it works every time. Then we can just squeeze on in here, turn off the jetpack, and press the button to close it up. Once it's closed up, it'll snap in place and lock the merge blocks. And this is the interior. As we look above, we've got some gyroscopes going all the way along. We've got our conveyors with a small little air vent on there, which is going all the way through this area. Then we have other buttons all the way. Yes, we've got some buttons, which is the red alert light. So if you're in danger, you can turn that on. And then we have the standard passenger lights which we can turn on and off. Moving through here we can see some conveyors everywhere, we've got lots of signs. So we've got our passenger seats which we can sit on and be all safe. We've got our armoury boxes where if we open it up we've got some ammunition, we've got some tools, we've got some guns just in case. And a small, small LCD screen underneath there telling you what's going on inside them. And the same is on the opposite side. As we go further towards the back of the ship we've got another button which we can place. Opening up this, please open, don't explode. Oh dear, maybe if I reverse it, it might snap, oh, the whole ship is moving, I'm scared. All right, open it up, there we go, it worked. Whew. Little bit worried there. But yes, going through this dangerous door, we can then close up with this button, and we're in the recreation area. 
where we have an array of different things from command seats to your dinner to toilets and to general sitting areas. So we got a sign here which is the USSF with a very pixelated sign of the tiger claw. And then on both sides we got exactly the same stuff but we can come across to here where we can have our drinks and our food. So if you want to have our Coca-Cola, Sprite or Fanta, ooh I'd love a Fanta right now. You can order it and pretend to take your drink. As of food, we got our cow burger, our... Not sure, I think that says London burger. I, I'm not too sure. And then we got Chicago. Yes, that's a little bit too blurry for me to see. Then we can turn around. We've got a small cargo container to store stuff in. Our survival kit just to heal on and to respawn on. And then we got our port engineering where we can sit here to a very glorious sight. Look at this, though they're programmable blocks upside down with little display screens on and some information screens to everything that is going on with the ship. The main power, the ship's mass, everything in your cargo bay, total hydrogen and all the ammunition and all the guns and all that. It's a really nice setup actually. And then coming around, it's the same on the opposite side so I won't bother going over there, but we can come up to here to our recreation area where we have our... Oh god, everything is leaking. Oh, that's not good. Yes, that's not good. It's probably because I have the doors all open, but never mind, eh? And then we have another display screen there telling you anything's damaged or anything like that. And you just sit here and view that while eating your food. Coming across to the left-hand side, we've got our sleeping area. Yes, we can get into this and go to sleep in our cryopod. And then right next to us, we've got... Uh-oh. No, I don't want to go in there. Well, we're in the toilets now, so this is our fake little toilet. You would go there on that hydrogen thruster. We've got some sound blocks, and we've got a small, what I presume could be a shower. I'd like to get out of here, please. There we are. We have a door for privacy that might trap you in there, and could be the end of you. Yes, that just closes up all neatly, so you can't spy on anyone in there. Yeah, that's really good, isn't it? Then we can come down here. Like I said, it's the exact same. On this side we have food, drinks, we got our engineering side, and then we can come back up here, a button for the lights, and all the way around. Opening up the door. Mm, open up the door please. You can do this. There we go. It's a little bit worrying when that one door can move the whole ship. But yes, let's move towards the front because this gets even more impressive. So we've got more seats here, which are showing you your floor plan. Then we got this seat right here. Getting in the seat will then turn you around to the cockpit. We have display screens out the yin yang here telling you absolutely everything you need to know. We've got our enemy radar, we've got our artificial horizon, our floor plan, our control setups are being displayed on those screens. We've got some programmable block stuff, some more script screens, and on the right hand side we've got even more stuff to be looking at. But no, how do we control the ship with all that out the way? Well, we have to take remote control, so finding that, take control, boom! We have a lot of complicated stuff to be doing. So number one will view us on the left hand side where we look out at the blue ship. Number three for the right hand side and number two for the central view where those Gatling guns are. Yes, take that red ship. Now, bringing up the HUD, because this is going to get a little bit complicated, we have open the wings, close the wings. Number seven is our target reticle. Yes, you use a projector to create a target reticle, where you can then aim directly forwards in that. It makes it a lot easier if you have your crosshair turned off, like I do right now. So it's there if you want to use it. Let's turn it off. Number eight and number nine are for the decoys. This one is for space. That one is for planets. The difference is one has a parachute. Then we come over to this. This is for the landing gear and to close several wings if you want to do that. So coming out of the camera, in fact I'll go back in the camera right now. So that is the downwards view, the number two. Let me just tilt the camera around and press number three, which will retract the landing gear, which will then fold up and move like that. And now we're ready to take off. So pressing space, we can then lift ourselves up. That'll do. Coming to a complete stop and turning off the dampness, I can come back to tab number one and press five, where we will open up 
and reveal our hydrogen thrusters at the back there. Once they're fully opened, they will be turned on and we can put the damage back on and just fly away. Now a little bit of information, this was designed to be used with a speed mod, but I don't have that installed because you know what happens when I use speed mods. Yes, we can just keep flying along here and it's great, isn't it? Just the way it opens up, you get a nice lot of speed. So while I'm stopped, let's just press number eight and we'll weld up a decoy. It will drop down and it will launch straight forwards. So there it goes with its little thrusters and off it goes on its merry way. Pressing number nine will create the parachute one, which will then drop down. Well, it won't really, in fact, I'll need to lift myself up. There we are. Because the problem with this one is, it's not on a planet, so it can't deploy its parachute because it doesn't know when to do it. So what we can do now is then come to tab number two, being I've talked about that, and then we can press number seven, which will then close up the bottom wings and it will essentially allow us to land without needing to close the top wings. Oh, it's very hard to get a view on this. Yes, we can then deploy our landing gear while having the top ones ready to go. Let's just retract them back and open them up. And last but not least, we have number nine, which is our red alert. So if I come in here, we'll then start glowing red. And then turn that off. We do have some other stuff on here, which is for the like aligning yourself to the planet's gravity and all that. But I don't need to talk about them being I'm in space. So let's go for a little fly, shall we? So moving forwards, we have a lot of speed moving forwards. All those thrusters there are doing a lot of work pushing us forwards. But now we can just slowly come to a stop. Stopping is a little bit of a problem with this ship. It does take quite a long time to do. That's kind of what you'd expect from a ship with a lot of thrusters at the back. So it's not too bad. There we are, that's now stopped. We can go left. Left is pretty fast actually. And then going right. Again, is pretty fast. Going down. It's all right, isn't it? And then pressing space to go up. Should be a lot of thrust there. Mm, it's all right actually. Wasn't what I was expecting, but it's still better than a few ships I've tried. And that is basically it. The only thing I can think of now is to spawn in an enemy ship and let those turrets on the side do some work. So the best one to spawn in here will be the Dex Fighter. Find all these, take that, give it to the pirates. And there we go. The custom turrets on the side there have just blasted the Dex Fighter into oblivion. But like I said, it's not intended for a full frontal assault. And you can see there, those Gatling guns are taking its time to destroy that little ship, but it's enough to deter people from coming close to you. If you manage to hit something vital on their ship, then you're going to be pretty safe. But as for that, that is basically it for this video. It's a lovely ship with a great design, and I love the way that the wings fold out. And if you wish to download and try it yourself, it'll be in the description below you to play around with basically do be aware that because of all the rotors it can be a little bit unstable and the way the doors work might require you to press the button a few times just to get it to align itself properly and open up so thank you all for watching and i'll be back with another video somewhat soon bye bye